Good morning, Faith Community Church. My name is Satina Craffy, and I am the Outreach Director here at Faith Community Church. Is it? <laughs> Sorry, I thought it came up. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're really glad that you're here today. There are several announcements that I would like to bring your attention to this morning. Our first announcement is tomorrow, Christmas Day, we will be having a Christmas service led by Pastor Stan at 10 a.m. All are welcome to join us. We will be having a watch night celebration on December 31st at 11 p.m. Please bring some games as we battle it out with our games. We will also be having fellowship time on January 1st following our 10 a.m. worship. At this time, I'd like to call Pastor Stan up to talk about our focus for 2023. Good morning. I welcome you to worship this morning. Happy Christmas Eve. It's nice to have each of you with us. Um, for 2023, we're doing a read through the Bible. What that means is you are invited to read through the Bible, but that can be a very intimidating task. Amen? Amen. How many of you have ever tried to read through the Bible and failed? I didn't say succeeded. If you've succeeded, that's not your hand up. But if you have ever failed, I have done it. I have succeeded, but I have also failed. So we're trying to do a number of things to make it easy for you this next year. David, Pastor David, and the Andersons, who are family active in our church, who run a media company, are working together to create a podcast that will happen every day. I've already heard the first one. It's very well done, which means all you have to do is click a button, and every day you'll have Pastor David read your scripture to you for that day. No commentary, nothing else, just the scripture. We're using an open translation, which means it's one that is in the public domain. It's a modern translation that was done recently. So if you say, oh, it's a little different translation than what I'm used to, that's okay, because it's the only one that we're given permission to use. You can't, we found that out, you can't just take a other translation of the Bible and read it on a podcast because somebody owns the rights to it. We also, on Sunday morning, will be preaching on a passage from the week before. So as you come to worship on Sunday, you'll be able to say, okay, something that I read this last week is also going to be the basis of our Sunday morning message. So we hope you're going to join us in doing that. We will be getting links out to you. The podcast is being created. The first two weeks of it have already been created, but they're not ready to go up. But sometime next week, we will be emailing you out and I believe it will be on Spotify for sure. So if you don't have Spotify and you use an iPhone or any other smartphone, it's a good idea to download Spotify. We're also trying to do it as an Apple podcast. But it will be podcast. We will be preaching through the Bible. And it will be an opportunity for you to set a challenge for a year and read through. If you miss a day, don't worry. It's okay. There's a new day and a new podcast. Just pick up that day but we really want to help our congregation read through the scripture in 2023. Thank you, Pastor Stan. So FCC welcomes you. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're really glad that you're here today. So if you could look to the left, look to your right, say hello, good morning today, Merry Christmas. And if this is your first time joining us, there will be members of the welcome team right outside the atrium to welcome you. At this time, I call the Crafty family up. The Word became flesh and made its dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from God, full of grace and truth. The light has gathered, we celebrate in hope. Love. Joy.
and peace. Which are all central characteristics of our Emmanuel, God with us, whose light shines in the Christ candle this Christmas. Please remain standing for our call to worship. We count it mere hours now. Soon the first pains of labor will be felt. Soon God will once again break into our lives, coming in a way that is expected yet unusual, challenging our expectations and calling us to see life differently. Let's join together in the singing of our first hymn. If you could turn in your hymnals to page 234 and let us join together in singing, O Come, All Ye Faithful.
seated. I'd like to take time before we do our prayer of yearning and just hear the prayer concerns or celebrations of our congregation. If there are names or individuals you'd like to share at this time. Janice Downey. Downey. Thank you. And also Tim, her son. Janice, again, was 92 when she passed away. So So how old was she? She was 90 years old. She was older than Barbara, five days older. So now we know your age. It's wonderful to have my good friend Jerry Leach, uh, Jerry Leach, Jerry Backland in worship with us today. Welcome. Nice to have you with us this Christmas Eve morning. Tim Springer, who's in Syria? Charlotte. Charlotte. Howard. Howard. Thank you. Chris. Aaron. Sue Gill is in the hospital. They're running tests on her, so we are keeping her in prayers. Thank you. And also for Steve. Not the time you want to be in the hospital running tests. So, nice to have you with us. Eileen. Steve. Priscilla Breck. Priscilla Breck. And that is Satina's mom. All the people who are traveling, that they'll be safe and well. That includes our son and daughter-in-law. They headed out to Pennsylvania early. They live in Cleveland, and I believe that everything was good, but it's a tough year this year. Tough, tough year this year for travel. Kaiser and Jason. Cheryl. Yes. Peg. Peg. Okay. Other names. People in Ukraine, absolutely. Thank you. And now I invite you to join with me in our prayer of yearning. God of birth, God of light, in this time of song and prayer and silence, reawaken in us the awe of Christmas. As we hear again the story of a young woman and a surprising visitor, Remind us that we are called to respond to you in unexpected ways. And when we leave this place, may we be willing to sing praises for a young woman who said yes and the birth that we prepare to celebrate. Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace and your goodness. We thank you that we can lift up all of these persons this Christmas Eve. We pray for healing, for comfort, for peace. We pray for those who are not able to be with us because of health concerns. We pray for each of us that no matter what we face, we could always trust in you. We pray for those who are traveling. We pray for those who are facing struggles, those who have uncertainty. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for all of us as we face deep and incredible social problems and things that divide us help us to learn to work together. And on this time of the year when we celebrate the Prince of Peace, Christ who came into this world to reconcile us with you and to help us learn to reconcile with one another, help us to be an example of what it means to be people of peace, people who follow our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray this day in the name of the child who even now is starting to push from the womb, who would later in this day Teach his friends as he came into this world. He grew in the home of Mary and Joseph. He loved and was loved by others as he teaches us how to pray. For Jesus says, when you pray, pray like this. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. If you came this morning prepared to make a contribution to God through Faith Community Church, there are a number of ways you can do that. You can always give online. 
through faithcommunityma.com. You can also use our two offering baskets at the back of the sanctuary or the one at the side. We also have a special drive we're doing this Christmas. It is our Pastors Fund Discretionary Helping Fund. 100% of what is put in this goes to help families within our congregation. And that's why we brought this out at Christmas time. We're not asking for you to necessarily make an extra contribution at this time. We just are having it out at this time, and it's going to be there at the beginning of the year. Our fund helps a lot of families in our church. And this last year, there's been a lot of needs that came up, and it ran dangerously low. And so we decided to ask our congregation for that. And we're trying to make all of the offerings that are coming in on Christmas Eve that are additional offerings to go into that fund. So we thank you for being with us. And at this time, we will have our offertory, O Holy Night. Let 
fall within us, praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord, then ever, ever praise we his power and glory evermore. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your faithfulness in our life and all that you do in our world. We give you thanks this Christmas Eve that we can make our gifts of tithes and offerings. We pray your blessing on each gift and on each giver. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. And I invite you now to remain standing as we sing hymn number 239, Silent Night. <coughs>
seated. Our scripture reading is the telling of the birth of our Savior. I'll be reading from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. I am using the New Living Translation. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's hometown. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no lodging available for them. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby. They were guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them. Don't be afraid, the angel said. I bring you good news that will be great joy for all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by a sign. You will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth, and he will be lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven. They were praising God, and they were saying, Glory to God in the highest, and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried off. And they found Mary, and they found Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. After seeing him, the shepherds told everybody what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherds' story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to the flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen It was just as the angel had told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It is good to have each of you with us on this Christmas Eve. This is the first time I think I ever remember doing a morning Christmas Eve service, so we're breaking new grounds here this morning, among other things. As I thought about Christmas Eve this year, I thought about telling the story. Now, When we tell the story, some of us are more comfortable with that than others. Amen? Do you know what that means? I tell everybody everything. My son Todd, I was talking to one day, and he's an introvert, and I said, I was trying to coach him on how to talk to people. And he looked at me and he said, Dad, you drive down the street and you see somebody walking a dog, you stop and you go over and talk to them about their dog. I said, yeah, what's wrong with that? He goes, introverts can't do that. So I understand right off the bat that telling the story is probably a little bit easier for us who are extroverted. It kind of comes more naturally. So when I thought of telling the story of the birth of our Savior, about the fact that it intersects with our life, it's not just something that happened 2,000 years ago, it's something that continues to inform us today, I thought of how I tell the story. And there's lots of different ways in which I tell it, or our family tells it, but one of the ways that we tell it is through our Christmas tree. Now, how many of us have Christmas trees in our home, or have ever had a Christmas tree in our home, or know what a Christmas tree is, okay? So we all have the concept, a Christmas tree. On our Christmas tree, like this one here, there really isn't much of a story other than, I think at the beginning of the pandemic, we wanted to put up a Christmas tree And so we didn't know what to do. We went out and we bought one and we made it all red and white and it's lovely and it looks good. But it doesn't really, in and of itself, at this point, tell much of a story because we haven't tried to do that with it. But in our home, probably in your home too, you have these ornaments and they're all special, right? And they tell a story. They may tell a story of your own family. They may tell the story of things that your family's done. But they also, hopefully, tell the story of Christmas the story of Christ's birth, the story of God coming into this world. Because even as we pick those ornaments, if we go back and we look at them and we think about 
what they are and they think about what they mean, we start discovering that right there, we have the opportunity to tell the story. Now, let me bore you even more. If you came to my house when we set up our Christmas tree, we tell the story between Regina and myself of every single ornament on our tree. And we even do it with the little kids. And I noticed that this year with Ruby and Henry as Regina would be telling some of the stories. The first story that's important for us to live and understand about Christmas is what I call the word expecting. You see, this is a season of expecting. This is a season of always looking forward and knowing no matter what you and I are going through right now, that God is faithful. And just as God was faithful to this world in sending us his son, and people looked forward to it, so too in our lives, sometimes things aren't perfect or things aren't how we want them to be, and so we have that same expecting. But it's a positive expecting because it's not expecting because it's based on other people or based on our own best thinking, but it's based on God's faithfulness. Amen? I'm going to say that again. Our expecting is based on God's faithfulness. Amen? Amen. It is. Listen to the story as it's told in Luke's Gospel. Joseph took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, and was now expecting a child. They knew the baby was coming. The baby had been promised. The baby had prom promised for thousands of years. Yes, expecting is essential at Christmas. It's essential in life. If we lose hope, man, that's the like worst place for anybody to ever be. Remember one time being with somebody in the hospital and she had been going through this whole thing where they didn't know what was wrong with her. Her name was Rose. I knew her in my first church. And one day I went in and she said, I got my diagnosis. I said, is it good? She goes, it's wonderful. I now know what to expect. The doctor can tell me what's coming forward. I know God will get me through this. You see, it's not only that there is expectation of the birth of the Christ child, but there's also the expectation in our life that we know that God is faithful. And whatever we go through is for a season, and God is not finished with us. We call it theologically the already not yet. David and I had a conversation about that this week, talking about what theologian coined that term. Already not yet means the kingdom of God is here, but it's not yet fully here. And so we live always with the assurance of God's presence in our life, but it has not yet been completely fulfilled. And so there's always an expectation for us as Christians, which gets me to my first Christmas tree ornament. Yes, you see her up there. She is the one who gets prize place in our family. She always has her story told because she is the story of expectation in our family. Let me tell you why. I wasn't always a pastor. Years ago, I was a college student, and I was engaged to a lovely woman named Regina. And it was the Christmas season. And a family in Waterloo, Indiana, the church that I served, invited us over for dinner during December. And we didn't know what else was happening, but we were engaged to get married the next year, and they said to us, their names, they were the Turners, and they said to us, we are going to decorate our Christmas tree today. Now that felt a little odd because the family was all there decorating the Christmas tree. And they put all their tree ornaments up, and Mrs. Turner told us all the stories of all the different trees. And then she took this ornament and she said, here, this will be your first ornament as a new couple. This you will always hang on your Christmas tree, and you can have it from now till Christmas, expecting your upcoming wedding. You better believe this ornament has a prized place in our home. She not only is an angel and represents the expectation of the birth of Christ in this Christmas story, she represents to Regina and myself and to our family the fact that no matter what is going on in our life, God is faithful. God has more to do. There's much to expect and much to hope for. And yes, Ruby and Henry had to listen to the story this year. And someday they will be able to tell you all about our little angel. 
The second word that I want us to think about as we tell the story, we don't only tell the story as Christians that we expect, that we know God's faithful, God's going to do great things in the future, but the second word is Savior. I love it when people say, remember the reason for the season. The reason for the season is not that the baby was born. The reason for the season is the Savior came into this world. Amen? There's a big difference. We have babies in our family. They're awesome. But they're not the Savior of this world. Some days people will say to me things like, Pastor Stan, I went to your church. I go, I don't have a church. I'm privileged to serve in Christ's church. It was Jesus who bought his church with his blood as he gave his life on the cross. We have a Savior who was born into this world. That's a story we tell. It's a story that transforms our lives because it means no matter what we've done wrong, God visited this planet in a most unusual way and came to become one of us. As the hymn that we sang said, he was begotten, not created. He's not just another created human being. He's God incarnate coming into this world to give his life for you and for me. And so the Savior is the reason for the season. It's why we celebrate, because we know that God so loved this world. The the angel says, the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. That's what the angel announced on the hilltop to those shepherds. Look up, be cheerful, be filled with joy. You matter. No matter what you've done wrong, no matter what mistakes you've made, no matter where you've messed up in your life, remember, you are so important and so loved by God that God visited this world and sent a Savior just for you. If you were the only one who ever went wrong, remember, the Savior would have been sent for you personally. Yes, Christmas isn't just about expectation, and it's not just about a baby, it's about a Savior, which takes me to my second Christmas tree ornament. And yes, you have it right. It is a nativity scene. But it's not just any nativity scene. You see, our Christmas stories, remember, tell our story. And so it's interesting. This came from Nidaris Cathedral in Trondheim, Norway. When Regina and I were able to travel to Norway with my brother and his wife, my brother at the time was stricken with cancer, and we didn't know we wouldn't have him much longer But it was our last great vacation with my brother and and an awesome and amazing time. And so when we got to Trondheim Cathedral, one of the most beautiful cathedrals in the world, and if you watch, um, what is this, the choir from Minnesota? St. Olaf's Choir. They actually have a program from this cathedral. If you watch it, it, it plays many times on Christmas Day. It'll probably play again this year. And so we were at the cathedral, and we're good Americans. We barely had any time after we walked through the cathedral. They were like the tour bus is leaving. And what did we want to do? Buy a keepsake. We're Americans. We're consumers. Come on now. That's what we do, right? So we went in, and we rushed, and we hurried, and we wanted something for our Christmas tree, and we wanted something to tell the Christmas story, and so we bought it, and we paid way too much money for it. Do you know why? Because we thought it was made in Norway, and it's actually made in Korea. And you can buy it at the paper store here in town for less money. Is that an amazing story? It tells so much about the birth of our Savior. We get caught up in the things that don't matter. But it doesn't matter where it was made. And it doesn't matter if it was an authentic Norwegian thing, which it isn't. But it's authentic in another way. It reminds us of a special vacation. It reminds us of the birth of a Savior. A Savior who's very personal to us, not only because he forgives our sins, but because he makes it possible for life everlasting, which means my brother who I lost, I will see again. Amen? Amen. My brother was a wonderful Christian man. And I look forward to seeing my Savior's face and my mom and my dad and my brother. Christmas is about the Savior. And then the last word is the word all. If we're going to tell the Christmas story, if it's going to be part of our life, remember that all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. Meaning the shepherds went and they experienced the birth of the Savior and they couldn't shut up. They were like me. They went on and they told everybody. 
They didn't just see people walking dogs and go talk to them. They saw people walking down the streets and they said, you will not imagine what happened. The Savior has been born. Jesus is here. The Messiah is here. Things are going to look up. Don't worry about it, folks. We saw the baby. We're here to tell you the story. And you know what? When we understand happens when we do that, the family grows. Not only our personal family, but the church family. Christ's church expands. The shepherd told others, and the family increased. The first missionaries, the first ones who went out and shared the good news were common everyday folks who smelled pretty bad because they took care of sheep. But as they went and they talked to others, others heard the message and knew that God loved them. And no matter what, they were now part of his family. This is a natural result of telling our story. You see, growth is a natural thing. Do you ever think about that? In the spring, we plant our seeds and the plants grow. We look at our trees and they get bigger every year. We look at our little kids. I always think it's funny when somebody says, it's amazing how much your child has grown. I haven't seen them for seven years. I always want to say, it would be more amazing if the child hadn't grown in the last seven years. Now that would be something to talk about. Growth is natural. And as we think of the Christmas story, as we think of the fact that it reminds us that there's always expectation because God is doing more, as we realize that it's about the Savior who was born, it's also about all. It's about everybody you and I come in contact with because God loves them and God cares about them and God wants a relationship with them and God wants them to know that there's a Savior for them too and their life can be transformed and their sins can be forgiven and all that they have done wrong can be put in the past and they can have a fresh start because that's what Christmas is. It's a story of expansion and growth, which made me think of these two sweet little ornaments, because to the best of my knowledge, they are the first two ornaments that were made by my grandchildren. And they're made right here at Faith Community Church on Parents' Night Out. And you can tell which one is Ruby's, because she keeps telling us, did you know Ruby means red? I like red. I like Ruby red. And it says on the back, Ruby. That's how I also know what it is, because somebody wrote it on there. And this one says Henry. And Regina reminds me that he took the paint and painted it all by himself. Because that's what Christmas is. It's about growing and expanding the family. Not just expanding our family, but expanding Christ's family. And sharing the news, not only because it made a difference in our life, but because it can transform other people's lives. What is the meaning of Christmas? It's a story for us to tell. It's about expectation that no matter what, God will do more because that's who God is. It's a story of a Savior who came into this world to give his life for you and for me, that we might not only have life everlasting, but we would always have a relationship with our Savior who loves and cares about us and with God who is our Redeemer. And it means no matter who we've lost or what has happened in our life, we look forward to the day when we're reunited because of our Savior, not because of things that we've done. And it's about all. It's about the whole world. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe would not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. And now I invite you to stand and join with me as we sing our final hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High, hymn number 246.
Let us go forth now with peace. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest and abide in our hearts today and forevermore. Amen.